In this video, we're going to talk about adding custom scopes to models. So if we wanted to have a page that, say, showed all of the items that are completed or near completed, we can add a custom scope that looks at the percent complete and then uh, only shows the ones that are in kind of that, uh, that level. So let me add a couple more values here, like uh, go 80. And then I'll go 50 and 78. Okay, so this should give us a, a good cross sampling of all the different values to make sure our scope is working. So what I'm going to do is open up our project file. I'll get rid of these comments. And the way that you create a custom scope is by typing in scope, then pass in a symbol. So I'm going to say almost completed. And this is going to pull in the ones that are actually completed. In a regular application, I would probably also add another scope for completed and either archive them or do something like that. But I'm not going to worry about that for right now. I just want to show you how the, a, a custom scope can work. So almost completed, comma, and then add this little uh, this little lambda or proc symbol, and uh, this is going to tell almost or it's going to tell the scope that it has a symbol or an alias of almost completed, and to perform this method when you call it from the controller. So the way to put this is, let's put it in curly braces and say where. So this is a, something you're already familiar with is putting in a where clause. And then we're going to add a little bit of SQL inside of here. So I'm gonna say percent complete is greater than 75.0. So now we have this method which we can call from our project's controller. So I'm gonna pull this in. So instead of projects all, and usually this would go on a, you know, you could put this on a different page. It doesn't have to be in the index action, but I'm just gonna do that because it's here. And so I'm gonna do almost completed and do this instead. And now see, got the Rails server started. Come back here, hit refresh, and now you can see that it gave this scope. So now if we wanted to create one where we could duplicate it and say, uh, let's see, uh, still needs some work. And I wouldn't actually call this one this in real life, but just so you can kind of make the point in reverse, we can come here say still need some work, come hit refresh, and then it would pull in these values. Now, part of why I also wanted to do that was to show you that this only pulled in the ones where percent complete was zero and 50. This ignores the ones that are nil because it's not gonna do a comparison between nil and the, um, and the other values that actually have something there. And this goes to one of the next videos we're gonna do where we're gonna set up default values for percent complete and uh, start to integrate some callbacks and things like that because in a real project, you wouldn't ever wanna have a nil value in percent complete because if you ran a query like this, if you have something that doesn't, that has had no work done on it, you would still want to have that as a zero, not as a nil value. So it would come up in a query like this. So this is how you integrate custom scopes into your model files and how you can integrate those into the controller. 